salvation in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the glory, all the praise. Have your way, Holy Ghost. And everyone agreed by saying, Amen. 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 Let's worship him.
Roman martyr, but tell us about that first verse. Tell us what it says. I, you want to do a verse? If you'll yeah. lower it just a on my feet. I had plenty to eat and a home in heaven by and by. Brothers and sisters on this earth, they are not by my new birth. And we shall share in that home beyond the sky. I had shoes on my feet. Yes. I started writing and I started writing and writing and writing and writing. 
And the Lord said, hmm, you have to welcome me into your house. Oh. You have to welcome me. I need to feel welcome. And thank God, we, I think he feels welcome here this morning. Yeah. And that's amazing. That is amazing and awesome and great. Um, he's here every Sunday, whether we know it or not, or whether we want to know it or not. If we just sit there and do nothing and invite, not invite him in, he's here anyway. Yes. But he wants us to welcome here, yes. welcome him here. And I think it's wonderful that we've done that this morning. So that was a whole lot of other stuff that went with it. But I don't need to do that because he is here and you are yes. yes. obeying the spirit. And I'm so thankful for that. So... I'm going to sing Wonderful Merciful Savior, and one of the ways that we can invite him in is by participation, right? So me singing to you doesn't really help anything, so I need your participation, okay? So I'm going to sing, and then it's going to be your turn to follow, and we're just going to praise God, and I want to hear your voices, and I want you to tell him how wonderful he is. And if in the middle of you singing that part, you decide that you just need to say, thank you, Jesus, or hallelujah, or praise your name, then you do it. Because that's what God wants us to do, yes. to welcome yes. him here. Yes. Y'all ready? Got your singing voices going? We need to do some knees or anything before y'all get ready. All right, here we go. Wonderful, merciful Savior, wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could.
You're so blessed. You're so blessed. All they are so blessed. Right. You know, think about the things that are going on in America. Think if we were somewhere that there was really bad stuff going on. So praise the Lord for our blessings here in America and our lives. I praise the Lord for everything. Our faith has been tried.
He gave me life when I deserve death. And you know the good thing about the Christian, we're not going to die. We're just going to go to be with Jesus. And then we're going to have 10,000, we're going to have thousands of forever. But the song says 10,000 years or more, and we just begin to praise his name. Sometimes you hear people say, what in the world are we going to do in heaven? There is not going to be nothing to do. For the first 10,000 years, I just want to praise him. The first 100,000 years, I want to praise him. Be no more time in heaven, thank the Lord. It's a song we used to do when we just little kids. Tammy, you want to come help us sing it? 10,000 years. We used to sing it recorded on them little cassette tapes. Our little cassette players with the little tapes. Remember those? If you are, you're old as me. Hallelujah. Soon I'll come to the end of my journey. And I'll meet the one who gave his life for me.
praise. Hallelujah. He is so, so worthy. The Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. So glad, so glad, so glad that I know a Savior who went to an old rugged cross and shed his blood that we might be free. Free from sin, free from death. For Jesus said, he that believeth in me shall never die. Amen. My soul's going to go on, on to eternity to be with him forever and ever and ever. I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 6. We're just going to keep worshiping God. Amen. I'm looking for his word to speak to everyone's heart. May God touch us, have his way. We had a district conference yesterday in South Boston. Holly and I went. First time we've had conference in a very long time. And uh, Pastor Steve Dyer preached. He's uh, from the Trinity Church. Did an outstanding job. And then, uh, you know, really wasn't any business to take care of. So everybody got to testify. And was, I, I think one of the best things about the conference is uh, some of our Hispanic churches was there. We have three, I think maybe four. Hispanic churches in the Virginia district now. One's all the way in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and uh, one's in Crewe, and I know uh, Lester has taken over the church. Y'all remember Brother Lester that came to youth camp. Uh, he's taken over from Marvin Sosa. Marvin Sosa needs your prayers. Uh, he is on dialysis, I understand, four times a day. He's in very bad shape. Please pray for him. We had a, just to hear the testimonies of our Hispanic churches and what God's doing, how they're growing, and how humbled and excited they are to be be part of the Congregation Owners Church. It was a blessing. Uh, in July the 17th, we'll be having a conference here, actually be our voting conference. So we'll be looking for some delegates and looking for you wonderful, wonderful ladies to cook everybody a meal. <laughs> well, amen and bless God. <laughs> Men can cook too. I think for the most part we, we, we want the ladies to cook, but some of you men that know what you're doing, get on in there. In Jesus' name. Amen. Appreciate all that God is doing. Luke chapter 6, I want you to stand. God, may you have your way if we read your word, touching every heart. Lord, it is unclear to us, being human beings, exactly what you've set forth to do on any given service, any, any given gathering. But God, we're fully trusting in you today. And your son, Jesus Christ, anoint your word as our prayer. Prepare our hearts. Help our ears to hear. Help us to take heed. Lord, we love you today. There's nobody like you, Jesus. You have given more than anyone that's ever walked this earth. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God for his word. Amen. Amen. Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Give God a hand clap as you're being seated. <laughs> so for weeks, even leading up to the Easter service, various messages have been preached about how Jesus gives and he gave and what he has done. One particular Sunday, maybe you can find it on our YouTube channel, but uh, I remember one message uh, that the Lord had uh, given us was, hey, husbands, love your wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for it. So we spent a lot of time talking about how God gave his son, but more so how Jesus gave of himself for the church. Not only did he give himself on the old rugged cross, but he gave himself when he left heaven to come into this sin-stricken world. He gave himself as he ministered to the masses, giving of his time and giving of his effort. And how that he could have, he certainly had the ability to become rich and famous 
and accumulate all the wealth of the world and all the pleasures of this life if that was his desire but he forfeited all of that to live perfectly giving himself ultimately knowing that he had to be perfect to be the lamb slain from the foundation of the world he had to be perfect to shed blood that was pure enough and righteous and holy enough to wash my sins away to wash your sins away his whole experience on earth his whole life on earth was giving giving time giving virtue giving healing giving blessings giving his body to be broken as we talked about on Easter and giving his blood to be shed just giving and giving and giving and still yet as we gather together in our churches and maybe hopefully we all have a prayer place at home in our house oh I'm going to hesitate there for a minute might drive a post and stay a while. We need a prayer place in our home. A place where we go talk to God. And we cut away and cut off the world's activities. And we just get along with Him. And begin to cry out, holy, holy, holy. And begin to magnify and praise Him. And then we begin to get into prayers like, give us this day our daily bread. But even still today, having been redeemed and blood washed, our name written in glory, still yet we, we come to God and we come to Christ and we ask, Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. God, I need a healing. God, I need a financial blessing. God, I need a job. God, help my car. God, help my kids. And that's okay. That's God's will. God wants to hear from you. There's some people in this life that probably don't want to hear from you. I know there's people in this life that don't want to hear from me because they, they know what I'm going to say. But God wants to hear from you. God wants to hear your cry. God's not put off by your request. You have not because you ask not. We ought to be going to God like the little widow lady who was driving the evil judge crazy to the point where he granted her request. Uh, our judge, our God is not evil. He's holy and he's loving. Uh, and he wants to hear our hearts cry. He wants us to pray. He wants us to ask. Hallelujah. He's a giving God, a loving God. He never runs out of supply. Hallelujah. He never runs out of material. He never runs out of goods. He never runs out of blessings. His shelves are never empty. Hallelujah. His cargo ship is never halted. His plane is never grounded. My God's supply is unmatched. It is untouched. It remains available. And if you don't tap into what God has for you, you're missing out. Amen. So we spent a lot of time Quite frankly, over the years, talking about all that Jesus has done, all that he wants to do, all that he did yesterday, what he's doing today, and what he's going to do tomorrow, shedding of his blood, dying on the cross, enduring a grave, but rising again. Now he's on the right hand of the Father. He describes himself as our mediator, the one who makes intercession for us. He loves us and wants to bless us. He's a giving God, a giving Savior. It can't be overstated. I, I can go on and on and on of all that Jesus Christ has done for you and, I, and all that he's done for people that's lost, all that he's done for people that take his name in vain, all that he's done for people who don't care about him whatsoever. Jesus died for those that never even inquire of him or mention his name. He was despised and rejected of men and all he could say is, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He's gave and gave and gave and continues to give and pour into your life. Yes. You agree? Yes. Yes. Well, glory. Now you just keep agreeing and shout. Praise him. My Bible says that God can pour out a blessing, that God can make sure that you're supplied with, God will give unto you in abundance so much that it's running over. Now, I've got a neighbor 
that lives down the street. I remember back in the late fall after all the leaves had fallen, he had a trailer out there and uh, I remember seeing five or six bags of leaves loaded up on the trailer. And I kid you not, you can look at his yard on that day, he still had so many leaves it looked like they hadn't picked up one. Leaves in abundance. I mean these trees that the neighbor has is huge and there's leaves everywhere. And I just thought, wow, what a blessing of leaves. <laughs> and an even bigger blessing is it's not my yard. <laughs> Glory. But I can imagine, now I want you to imagine with me a bag of leaves and, and, and you've done pushed the leaves in or maybe you've mowed and it was wet and you, you're kind of particular about your yard and you went out and we've done this before. We rake grass and put grass in the bags and want, want to make the yard just look good. So it's leaves or grass, but you keep piling the leaves in and you push it down. You press it down, as the Bible says. You pick the bag up. You ever done this with the trash? You pick the bag up and you shake it, trying to get it to settle down. I might be able to get some more trash in that bag. How dare I waste a bag? I might be able to get more. So you press it down, you shake it, and you put more in. Press it down, shake it, and you put more in, more in, more in. But there comes a point where you can't press it down anymore. There comes a point where you can't shake it down anymore. And you continue to put in, and now it's falling out the top. Now it's running over. The leaves are falling on the ground. The grass is falling on the ground. The trash is falling on the ground. What an example. What an illustration that the Lord gives us that God can give to you in such a manner that no matter how much you press and no matter how much you shake, you think you've got all you can handle, but now it's overflowing. It's coming out the top. You're drinking from your saucer because your cup has overflowed. God just keeps giving and keeps blessing and keeps moving and keeps listening and keeps saving and delivering and healing and setting free and bringing joy unspeakable and full of glory peace of God we can't understand it just keeps coming and it's overflowing yes. I don't know about you but I don't know anybody in the building or anybody in my life that would say God I, I don't want a blessing like that God I don't want you to bless me financially where I got so much it won't fit in my pockets God I, I don't want to be so healthy uh, that I feel like I'm just uh, overflowing with health and God I, I don't want to be so blessed that I'm overflowing and it's bubbling and I can't contain it I don't know anybody that has that attitude that God that's enough financial blessing God that's enough healing God that's enough joy and enough peace I don't know anybody that would say that I want everything God has for me I want God to give and I want to receive and I want God to give and I want to receive and I want God to give hold that thought because I'm locking the amens and the claps and the rejoicing that's who God is folks He's a, he love, he God is love. Amen. And only God knows when too much is too much for you. God knows we can't handle certain things. God knows some of y'all go plumb crazy if he give y'all a big hit. It's true. God knows some of us will wind up in the devil's hell if he give us a billion dollars. It's the truth. But he wants to bless you. Oh, he wants to give. Listen to this, verse 10 of Malachi 3. We're going somewhere. Just keep shouting. <laughs> Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And God says, prove me. Mm. Prove me. Test me. See if I'm true. Glory. You're going to find God is true every time. 
Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Glory. He didn't say the windows of your house. He didn't say the windows of the local barn. He didn't say the windows even of the bank. He said, I'm going to open the windows of heaven. Glory. Can you imagine the blessings pouring out of heaven? Can you imagine resources that never stop? Can you imagine riches untold? He said, I will open the windows of heaven. Not a barn, not a house, not a bank, not a drive through McDonald's, but I'm going to open the windows of heaven. That's what God said he would do for you. I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to to receive it. Well, if you want, I will. Glory! I'll take a blessing that's so much I, my pockets are overflowing. I done took the top hat off, it's overflowing. My jacket can't receive it in the pockets. The trunk of the car's full. The attic in the basement's full. I'm just so full of the goodness of God, the greatness of God, the grace and mercy of God. I'll open up heaven's windows and pour you out a blessing that you can't contain. You won't have room enough to receive it. God can do all that for you and he can skip over and do it for another and his resources never get low. Now I want to ask you, who wants God to pour out a blessing that's more than you can handle? Who wants financial blessings more than you can handle? Who wants health more than you can handle? Who wants His Spirit glory? That's when we're getting somewhere. Who wants His Spirit more than we can handle? We think we got, we're ready. But honey, you ain't near ready for what God wants to do. He wants to go beyond what you think. He wants to give more than you're prepared for. He wants to give more than you can contain. Because he's not just opening the slide glass door to bank or a drive through He's opening the windows of heaven, the place where eye has not seen glory, ear has not heard, hallelujah, and neither has it entered the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. And he wants to open the windows up of that place and pour into your life and pour into your spouse and pour into your children and pour into your grandchildren. Glory! God wants to give you something that you can't even contain. Hallelujah! Let the drive through church say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you all for listening outside. What a blessing to hear your horn blow. But now we're going to keep shouting. You ready? Those of you that's been attentive know where I'm going. In order for that window of heaven to come open and the blessing to pour out, in order for your bags to be pressed down, shaken together, running over because you can't contain, you first have to do something. Amen. One word. Give. Now, this is where a lot of people jump off the ship. This is where a lot of people listen to the devil and begin to judge every pastor and every preacher that mentions a dollar bill. May I remind you, probably have mentioned taking up an offering since we've been in this field and I can count on one hand. It's true. I'm up here in this building, y'all know for years, forget to take up an offering. It's the truth. Man, I come in here, I come to worship him. My mind's on Jesus. And to swell another lie of the devil, this church is not hurting. You want to know the truth? This church is blessed. Amen. Through a pandemic, we have been so blessed of God. Now what the devil just told you, I said, well, they don't need my money then. <laughs> See, I know the devil. Yes, amen. I got something for you this morning that I hope you capture. This scripture is not for God. It's for you. Right. Yeah. 
An offering taken up in a church is not for God. Well, God needs my money. we got to pay bills. He said that he owned the cattle on a thousand hills. He said he owns the beast of the field. God created the heavens and the earth. God doesn't need your money, which is paper printed on in the U.S. of A. What God needs is your faithfulness. What God needs is your trust. What God needs is your belief that Jesus come out of the grave. What God needs is your obedience. Because to obey is better than sacrifice. This message is not not for God. It's for me and it's for you. God wants to bless you in a way that you can't contain it. But first we've got to become faithful. First we've got to become obedient. First we've got to give and let God give unto us. Oh, let's go back to Malachi and let's read the part I left out on purpose. In verse 8 it says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, America says, we say, people say, wherein or why, how have we robbed you, God? His response is in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. I'm getting away from that. I don't want no curse. You are cursed with a curse. Holy Ghost, help us. See, we profess that we believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose from the grave. And I pray that we've all confessed our sins and asked Him to come in our heart. And we profess to be a Christian. We audibly profess that. And, but I'm going to tell you, friend, let's just get it, get, get, get down where they say the rubber meets the road, let me just be as transparent and as real as I possibly can. If you say that you believe Jesus rose from the grave, but you don't have enough faith to give tithes and offerings to see if God will bless you. Oh, this would be a good time to tell you that this pastor doesn't have a clue who pays what. You can ask our treasurer currently. You can call Sister Debbie, ask any of our deacons. I've never asked who pays tithes. I don't want to know. Because when I get a call to come see somebody, go visit somebody, I don't want the devil in my ear. Oh, well, you know this one. Don't do this today. Don't do that. I rebuke you, devil. Somebody needs the love of God. Somebody needs a, a move of the Spirit. I don't, I don't, it's not my concern who pays what. So the devil, you can take your lives back to hell. I'm telling you right now, if we become faithful... If we open up our little bitty window and give what God's asked for, He'll open up the windows of heaven and He'll pour out a blessing that you can't contain. And He says, prove me. Give me the opportunity to prove to you that if you give 10 on 100, see what I'll do. I'm God. I'm not your president. I'm not printing money somewhere and sending out checks. No, I'm moving the family of deer out of the road before you come around the curb. I'm healing your body before you even know you're sick. I'm moving for your children when you haven't even prayed yet. I am your God. I am your Lord. And I love you. And I'll move for you beyond what I'm already doing, but I've got to have your obedience. I've got to have your faithfulness. Well, the people outside are honking horns. Bless his name. I can't overstate this enough. I'm not here to tell you all the church is hurting. Our church is financially in better shape than it's been in several years. You want to something else? I'm telling you, God has put this on my heart for five weeks, and I've, I'm not going to say I battled it, but God, are you sure about this message? This is kind of different from what I normally pray. I normally preach about Jesus and Him crucified and risen. Do you know one year from now, I don't even think our board members know this, this church, I'm telling you this because I want you to understand this message is about your blessing. Yes, amen. This message is about your blessing. One year from now, 
You see, our church, we owe one payment. This church purchased the dorms and some land from the Virginia districts almost 20 years ago, 19 years ago. And we've been making payments, and the way it's written up, you know, there's payments. The interest, you can't pay it down. It's all locked in. It's a very good interest rate, especially for the time. So that payment, I'm just going to be straight, $750 a month that we pay to have all this land. I think some of the gym may even sit on this land. Don't hold me to that. And one year from now, it'll be 20 years. And we'll no longer owe that payment. $750 a month, it will be paid for. This whole property, every building, paid for. Paid for. So this whole message is not, oh, we need money, we're going to go down. I would never say that. God has been so good to this church and people have given and done so well. It's been an amazing thing. But this message is about your personal life. Your personal investment. We make investments all the time with our own time and with our money and different things. Why don't we make an investment in the God of heaven who we proclaim saved our soul, who we proclaim died but rose again. It's time to get obedient. I want you to be blessed in Jesus' name. I'd love to see you financially blessed to where it's running over. I'd like to see God over open the windows of heaven and move on every area of your life and your children and your grandchildren. Why? Because God can do it if we will prove Him and give Him the opportunity. Yes. Yes. Tithes and offerings, two separate things. You know, we believe that 10% of our tithes comes to a storehouse. This is a storehouse church offering. God may move on your heart to give to a need, to give to somebody, world missions, what have you. When God speaks to your heart about giving, I'm telling you, you just go do it. Just go do it. You say, well, I, ain't, I, I don't know that I, I got the means to do it. I've heard that. People ask me that. Well, Pastor, you know, I would... Pay my tithes, but I, I just don't, I can't afford it. This may be cliche, but it's so true. You can't afford not to. Let God bless you. Let God, it's like a wheel. Give, he'll give back. Give, he'll give back. Give, he'll give back. What you give is going to be minute compared to what God wants to give you. You're missing out on blessings because you don't fully trust God. It's an act of faith. It's an act of faith. I'm going to give. My tithes goes to the Virginia District. I'm trying to be as transparent as I can with you. I want to reach you with this. I want you to be blessed. I want you to have the full blessings of God. Hey, Amen. You ever heard uh, the tax IRS say we got unclaimed tax return? They say that. Unclaimed tax return. We got money that people hadn't claimed. I hear that and I'm like, bless God, where do I go look on the internet to see if some of it's mine? But that causes me to wonder, I wonder how much surplus God has. Mm. Wonder how much God has stored up to give people, but he hasn't released it yet because we haven't enacted the release. We haven't given and showed faith and showed trust so God can give back to us. If you want to see how this works, how many people, and I'm asking you to be truthful, how many people would throw your hand up and say, hey, God has been so good to me. I know what you're preaching. I've experienced it. God has blessed me because I have given. Yeah. All over the building. I'm telling you, you cannot go wrong. You don't have to be rich to give. You don't have to be poor to give. Just trust in God. Glory. I know this is hard. You know, they run preachers off for preaching about pocketbooks and wallets. But I can tell you one thing, I ain't up here taking up no offering to get me a new Learjet. <laughs> Although I'd like to have a helicopter that sit down in Florida and come right to Shawsville. 
But hey, we don't want to ask amiss, do we? We don't want to go to our prayer call and say, God, will you give me a billion dollars? No, that ain't, that ain't what God's talking about. God's talking, you just trust me. You believe my word. Just as much as you believe that Jesus rose on the third day, you're going to go ahead and believe that if I give to the Lord, God's going to bless me in a way. That God has already blessed you in ways you're unaware of. It's the truth. It's the absolute truth. Hey, God's blessed you in ways that you are aware of. Well, a few years ago, Holly and I was coming. It was women's ministry. I was bringing her down. And we were coming, and, and, and we were going, it's Route 8, 55 miles an hour. Hey, I'm being transparent. Let's be real. It was 59 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and a deer come out, and this deer come out of nowhere to the side. So I got close to the edge of the road hoping, I, you know, it was happening so fast. Maybe we could get by him. But I couldn't. He hit slammed in the back of the car, and that impact took me off the road. So trying to get back on the road again, I'm doing 59 and a half. I'm trying to get back on the road, and I did. But the car was out of control, and we slammed into a guardrail, probably still doing 55 miles an hour. Bam! And before we hit that guardrail, I remember looking over to Holly, and she'll remember that. I said, I love you. You remember that? I remember that moment thinking, this might be it. Might be it. We hit that guardrail. Bam! No airbags come out. Oh, I mean... Bam! Right up the nose of it here. No airbags come out. We look at each other. You all right? Yeah, you all right? Don't think the car is, but I am. How about you? We come on down to church. I like the women's ministry that night. I'm out here getting some zip ties and zip tying the bumper up. <laughs> car was told, but that wasn't no big deal. It was, uh, you know, Hyundai Elantra. But in that moment, we, we talked about this two weeks ago, we could have died. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, Robert Reed told me after I explained what happened at the church, Robert, Brother Robert Reed said, you know what? Some guardrails wouldn't put up but like three weeks ago or two months ago. And I'm telling you, if that guardrail wasn't there, we'd have went off into what looked like a ravine and I, we would have surely been dead. Surely. But see, even though we lost our vehicle, we, 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 we wouldn't hurt we wouldn't dead. And I just think about that. God is so good. And many of you have stories like that. That God has kept us safe. And there's times we don't even know that God's hand has moved on a situation so that we avoided an accident. So that we avoided being somewhere that He didn't want us to be. God has been so good. We can't even put our finger on it. We can't even write all the goodness of God because we've forgotten. We prayed about things and God's answered our prayers and now we done forgot about it. But He has been that good. I'm telling you. I'm imploring you. This is not for me. It's not even for the church. It's not, it's not for God. It's for you. Prove God. Start giving as you should. And God will bless you. And your marriage. And your home. And your kids. See, we get in this mindset. And I'm going to go ahead and close. Some of y'all ready for me to close. <laughs> we get in this mindset that it's all on God's shoulders. He's massive. He's huge. He created the universe. Jesus has done all the work on Calvary. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. It's all in God's hands. God is the one that makes decisions. And if God wants to do this, He will. If He don't, He don't. And we get in this place. The devil's deceived us. We get in this place that we don't do anything. Well, God, you know, God take care. Don't pray. Don't study. Someone can go to church. Don't give. Can you complete this scripture for me? Jesus said, if you love me. He got it. Keep my commandments. And with one word, he give a command to give. You won't miss it. I learned about tithing from dad. Bomb. Growing up, dad would get paid. He first hands his check to mom. Y'all can laugh. After it gets filtered through mom and he gets what 
she thinks he should have. <laughs> now, I remember going in Dad's bedroom. He separated money. I was a, I was a teenager. Separate money. What are you doing, Dad? Well, I'm laying out my tithes. I got to give God's first. I take it out now. First thing I do, I'm going to give it to God. Boy, that stuck with me all these years. Dad would work at the tire shop, work at an elastic factory. Later on, he's mowing for all the schools. Dad worked hard on the job, and he, and he works hard when he's not on the job. That's just Dad, and that's his generation. Bless God, let's learn something from that generation. I mean, I remember when our house was cinder block and, 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 and cement mortar on the side. I remember when, when we finally tore down the front porch, which was cracking because of cement, and they built a brand new nice porch. I remember when the siding went on. I remember when the upstairs was finished and me and my brother had a room upstairs. I mean, things just progressing. And the whole time, God, Dad continued, Mom continued, they tithed when they didn't have hardly anything. And I've seen their home less. And this, <laughs> I thought about this with Gail. When I went out to shoot basketball, I shot in the backyard. Dad get mad because I'm killing his grass. If you're going to play ball, you had to have mud on your hands when you got done because there's a mud hole. Dad keeps giving, time keeps going, and guess what? Now we got, and that was some goal he found out somewhere probably beside some dumpster. Terrible basketball goal. Now all of a sudden I got a new goal, and he's got a new driveway, and it's gravel. Dad just kept giving to the Lord. I'm trying to use the driveway. And now we're out in the driveway, and my brother and I shooting ball, and it hits the gravel wrong, and the ball would shoot down the yard. Man, I wish this thing was paved. My brother and I, we grew up, moved out of the house when Kayla's born, and guess what? She got to shoot on a paved driveway. <laughs> Another goal. Wow. But you know what? Just kept giving to the Lord, kept trusting in the Lord. Driveway was blessed. The house was blessed. The porch was blessed. The upstairs was blessed. The vinyl siding come in. Man, we project after project. The garden was blessed. I don't know anybody can grow a finer garden than Dad. I'm just telling you, you give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. He'll open up the windows of heaven. He'll bless your life. Hallelujah. I pray you've received this today. Because God wants to do something for you. He wants to do something for your wife. He wants to do something for your husband. He wants to do something for your kids. He wants to do something for your grandkids. I, I believe in praying right now for the generations to come. I believe in giving so there will be a blessing for my kids and their grandkids. God, see, we don't span generation after generation after generation. But God does, and our prayers do, and our faithfulness does. I can't. I can go on and on, but I won't. I want you to bow your head with me. But I'm telling you, make an investment in the kingdom of God. Make an investment of the God who has a vast supply and has said, "I will supply all your need." All your need according to your riches and glory, to his riches and glory. He said over Matthew chapter 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Don't even worry about tomorrow. He said, all these things we added. You put me first. You put me first. God is worthy of your first. God is worthy of your first. He's not requiring you to gather a lamb up and go to the high priest and sacrifice a literal lamb. No, God gave his son to take care of that for you. God has given and he's given and he's given. I'm just giving you the word this morning. I'm giving you some testimony. You'll never go wrong. Give it to the Lord. You'll never go wrong putting God first. Lord, we come to you this morning with open hearts. And Lord, we all agree we want blessings. We want it running out. We want our bags overflowing, God. We want our pockets overflowing. We want, we, we want you to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that's so big we can't receive it all. A blessing so big it take a whole lifetime to receive what you have. And then we'll go to heaven and really step into the true blessing. But God, right now I pray that you'll open hearts. 
that God, you'll give people desire and hunger and a, and a will. And the spirit of faith and the spirit of obedience. And God, we will do what your word says. Prove you. Prove you. God, we want to put you first. Help us to put you first in our prayer life, our study time, and our giving. Lord, we're asking you right now. I am. I'm asking you to open the windows of heaven right now and pour out healing on this congregation. Lord, for everyone that's sick, Lord, for everyone that's injured and struggling on all the prayer requests, Lord, I pray right now that the windows of heaven be opened up. By your stripes we are healed. In Jesus' name. Do it, Lord. Lord, if there's one in here that's away from you, I pray they'll come home. With the confession of faith, the confession of, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I want to be right with you. And, Lord, help us to make our mind up that we're going to do all we can for you and your kingdom. We're going to be faithful. We're going to sing.